Madam Chair, thank you. Welcome to each of the witnesses. Um, in July of 2021, the out of stock rate for baby formula was only 8%. Fast forward to March of 2022, that rate had risen to 30%. question to the witnesses. Wouldn't you say that when a rate nearly quadruples, that it warrants a response from the federal government and ideally a president that is aware of the crisis that is happening under his administration? Mr. Linscombe? I would expect a response, Senator. Um, I think, and I think that to, I will give the president a bit of credit in that it, I do appreciate that he is trying to get formula uh, in the country from abroad. Um, it is a tacit recognition that imports can play and should play an important role in this market and what happens when you have a market that's effectively walled off from import competition. Um, unfortunately, however, uh, that is a, a Band-Aid on a flesh wound. Um, that this, the market has been so distorted by all of the government policies that I mentioned in my opening statement that uh, there's just so much that a couple airlifts and photo ops can really do at this point. It is a, something that is, has been years in the making. Mr. Lynn, your thoughts? Uh, thank you, Senator. Um, yes, I, and I agree that the President of the United States has begun to address this issue. I think that he has... Um, taken important steps to deal with the closure of the plant and also to deal with the shortages themselves. Now, I think that... Now, but of course, the rise from 8% to 30% in, in March of this year, President Biden has said he was unaware of it, that he first became aware of this in April of this year, uh, after we were facing major shortages across the country. Uh, Ms. Carney, let, 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 let me ask you, what negative effects have you seen on the children in your hospital from this, this formula shortage? Thank you, Senator Cruz. Um, I have, uh, we are continually Can't hear struggling. There. Okay, it's all good now. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, Senator Cruz. Um, we are, we have been struggling over the last few months to make sure that we find appropriate substitutions for the formulas that that we cannot find um, and things that will be uh, metabolized and absorbed properly in our patients. But more than that, uh, out in my community, I have seen a lot of dietitians struggling to help mothers and babies find the right uh, substitutions that they can feed. For instance, um, I, I referred to the, the almond milk situation in uh, one community. And I, I really feel like we need to really focus more on this help to mothers and babies. We're talking about lives of, of babies and children. I don't know that we can just say, okay, the, uh, the market is open. Let every mother, mother choose which formula she wants. It, they really need some guidance some um, medical um, guidance and some uh, guidance from professionals that know nutrition. So I, I love that uh, we're trying to think about ways we can make more formula available, but it's not going to be something that mothers and parents can just go out there and choose on their own. They do need some guidance in doing that. So Ms. Carney, moms around the country are being told to, to just breastfeed. But, but am I right that for a significant percentage of mothers, uh, they have difficulty doing so, and indeed there may be medical reasons why doing so is not advisable? Really appreciate that question. Um, we know that breast milk, uh, human breast milk, is the optimal choice for infant nutrition. And if we can promote that more and have mothers educated on how to breastfeed and get the support they need by um, you know, reaching out to pediatric dietitians and dietitians that, that um, specialize in maternal nutrition and international board certified lactation consultants, these mothers can breastfeed. There's probably a very small, small percentage of mothers who cannot breastfeed. Many mothers think that they're not able to breastfeed because they run into 
problems, challenges, even things that I've mentioned with going back to work. That's a huge roadblock sometimes. But if we can address those and help mothers initiate and sustain breastfeeding, I think we will see a lot, um, a lot better health for our babies and children, and also um, more satisfied moms and um, being able to achieve the goals that they set for themselves with breastfeeding. Thank you. Uh